In chapter three, um, we're going to learn how to use functions in programming. The idea is that if you have a program that starts to get long and complicated, or <clears throat> if you have a task that you need to do um, several times in a row, then you can build a function, which then you can call to do that task. Um, and it makes the code a little easier to read, and um, it saves you from having to do repeat work. So we're going to look at this idea of functions um, in Python in two different ways. First, there are some built-in functions um, which you can bring into Python using an import command. And then we're going to talk about how you build your own functions. So looking at the first example, um, Python has a lot of mathematical uh, functions built into it. Um, Python is used a lot by physicists and engineers. Um, and data analysts, so it's not surprising that there's a fair amount of math built into it. Um, but to access that, those mathematical functions, you have to import a module called math. And the way you do that, or a way to do that, is pretty simple. It's import math. Um, and when you import math, you get a lot of functionality. Um, you can get the trig functions, the sine, cosine, tangent, um, exponential functions, e, ln, um, etc. <clears throat> now, the trick is that when you do this, those functions, if you do the import math command as is, are identified with a math module. So if I wanted to compute, for example, pi over 3, pi is defined in the math module. So to get to it, I have to do math, the module, dot pi, and then I can divide it by 3 and assign that to a variable x. If I want the cosine of pi over 3, I can plug x into cosine, but again, cosine is defined in the math module, so I have to do math dot cosine of x. So that says go out to the math module and look for the function cosine of x. Um, similarly, if I want the exponential function, if I want e to the first power, which should just give me e, um, it's x of 1, but that again is in the math module, so I do math dot x of 1, and that gives me z. And if I print those three out, you can, I can already see them on the bottom of the screen, but if I print those three things out, um, pi over three is a little bit over one. That's not surprising. Pi is close to three. Um, cosine of pi over three is indeed one half. Notice there's a one out here on the end. Um, that's an interesting uh, math or computer science topic called about round off error, but um, cosine of pi over three is indeed a half, and E is 2.71828. Uh, Etc. So, <clears throat> two things. By importing modules, you can gain more functionality in Python, and then you can get access to functions, um, which take inputs. Some functions take inputs and do something with them, um, and some functions, those are actually called procedures. They don't give you anything back. In this case, cosine of x, for example, is a function which takes an input and gives you back an output, and those are called functions. Okay, um, it turns out that there is another way to import stuff into Python. You can, instead of doing import math, you can say from math import, and the star in this case means everything. So we're gonna import, import all the functionality from math. Um, that could be, there may be reasons not to import everything. Um, if you had built your own cosine for, function, for example, you wouldn't want to build import maths, but in this case, that's not an issue. The advantage to doing the import this way, um, instead of just saying import math, is that you don't have to use the math dot notation. So we've imported all the functions for math, and now we can just say x is pi over 3, y is cosine of x, z is x of 1, and run, and we get the same output. Okay? <clears throat> so, what if we wanted to build our own functions? So I'm going to write, or we are going to write a little program to build a knock-knock joke. <clears throat> okay, so here's the first iteration, knock-knock um, version 1. We're just going to print the knock-knock joke out. Print knock-knock, who's there? Canoe, canoe who? Can you help me with my, canoe help me with my homework? Um, and this actually, I mean, it seems silly, but I pulled this knock knock joke off from a web page, and that web page underneath was written in a programming language called HTML, and there's code underneath to print the knock knock joke out. It's not just printing, it's not just typing text. You actually have to um, 
tell the web browser how to print things out. So there actually is code to put that web, this knock knock joke up on the web. Um, so there is, you know, some practicality to um, this assignment. Okay, so I noticed that there's some commonality among knock knock jokes. It's always knock knock who's there. So if I want to have more than one knock knock joke, I'm always going to have to do this. So maybe what I want to do, oh no, I didn't run this, so I'll run this. Uh, oops, I ran import math version one. What I wanted to do is run knock knock version one, which is not in my list. So let's go up here to run. Run. We'll run knock knock version one. There we go. So we print the joke out. Knock knock who's there canoe, et cetera. Okay. So if I wanted to build more than one knock knock joke into my little program, I'm always going to have to say knock knock who's there. So let's go over to knock knock version two. So notice that now I've got two new things here to start off with def and I've got a def knock knock and I've got a def who's there. This is how you build functions in Python. So there's a few things to notice when you're going to build your own um, function. Well, actually in this case, these are what are known as procedures because they don't give any values back. But anyways, um, they should go at the top of your program, not at the bottom. They start off with DEF, define, means we're defining a function. The name of the function, parentheses, a colon, and then the new line um, are the commands inside of your procedure or function. So we have two of these defined here, def, knock, knock, and def, who's there. Um, and they do something very simple, def, knock, knock, just prints, knock, knock, def, who's there, just prints, who's there. <coughs> Now, we can call these, if I want to print out knock knock, I can just call the function knock knock, sorry, procedure, it doesn't return a value. I can't assign knock knock to anything, um, so it's a procedure. Um, I can call who's there, and then in the end, I'm gonna print out um, the canoe, the canoe who, can you help me with my homework? Notice I'm doing it in one print command now, um, instead of having several print commands, I'm putting the slash n in there, which gives you a new line. Um, so if I run this, so we're going to run knock knock version 2, um, well apparently I can only have so many things in here at one time, I just keep knocking out the thing that I want. So run knock knock version 2, <clears throat> we get the exact same output. So here's what happens, um, Python comes into this program and sees, says, sees the author's cook, doesn't do anything sees these defs. It doesn't actually run those, it just makes note of the fact that there are procedures or functions up here at the top, um, gets the name of them, and then proceeds on. It doesn't start actually executing things until it gets down to here. So it gets past all the procedure and function definitions. So in this case, the first thing it does is it runs knock knock. So it calls knock knock, um, it comes down here, sees knock knock, calls knock knock, comes up here to this def, goes inside and says, what do I have to do inside this procedure? Oh, I have to print knock knock, so it prints knock knock. When it's done with the last line in this procedure, it goes back to where it was, goes back to here, says I'm done with that, go to the next line. This calls who's there, goes up to who's there. We see that in who's there, there's only one line to execute, it prints who's there is finished with that after that line. We can tell by the indentation. So notice that when you have a new def, these lines inside the def are indented. And they actually have to be, well, they're supposed to be indented four. See, it's yelling at me because I haven't indented them by four spaces. That's actually a Python thing. Um, this will run without indenting four, but it'll yell at you. So I'm gonna put this back to four spaces um, in, of indentation and it'll stop yelling at me. And over here, there's boxes over here are warning saying you've goofed something up. So I'm going to, by putting this to four spaces of indentation, um, it's gonna stop yelling at me. Notice I have another thing yelling at me. Expected two blank lines, found one. So from the start of your program to the first def, you're supposed to have two blank lines. So I just got rid of a bunch of boxes over here when I did that. Uh, expected two blank lines, found one. So I need two blank lines between my two procedures. 
Sorry, got sidetracked. Okay, so we've printed who's there. This is indented inside of the procedure, so it knows this. these are the lines of code in here. So anything that's indented like this will be inside the procedure. And when I get to here, this is not indented, so this is not inside the procedure. Um, I know there's a blank line here, but technically you wouldn't have to have that. It's just the fact that this is not indented. Okay, so we've called who's there. It printed who's there. And then we print canoe, canoe who, can it help me with my homework? Okay, if we wanted to get fancier, notice that whenever we put a word here, the next line is always going to be that word or phrase followed by space and who. So if we wanted to get fancier, we can go to knock knock version three. Oh, sorry. Um, I skipped ahead of myself. We always print knock knock who's there. You actually don't need two procedures to do that. You can put these both of these lines in one procedure. So knock knock version three, <clears throat> instead of having two procedures, we just have knock knock intro, which puts two print commands. Notice that they're both indented. Um, notice that I'm getting yelled at over here. So expected two blank lines, found one, get rid of that. Um, indentation is not a multiple of four, so I've indented too much. Doesn't like that. And okay. So I've got rid of got rid of those bad things. So in this procedure, we have two lines that are both indented. It's going to execute both. So the program will come in, see the author, see a procedure definition, say, okay, I'm going to make note of that, come down here to start actually executing code, say, oh, I need to call knock knock intro. It'll call that, it'll come up here. It'll execute the two lines of code that are now inside this procedure. Print knock knock who's there. So let's run this. Okay, so we're running knock knock version three. So it prints knock knock who's there. So this, these two lines here that are printed are actually inside there. And then there's the print canoe, print canoe who. Okay. Um, knock knock version four was what I was alluding to earlier that we noticed that anytime I put a phrase here, that phrase is followed by can you who um, oh <laughs> you know what I've got this wrong I'm actually talking about the homework that you have to do <laughs> this is something else um, this is where I want to print out two knock knock jokes and so I have two knock knock jokes they both have knock knock who's there but I want to separate them by a line. So here's what I've done. I run knock knock intro, same thing as before. So that gives me the knock knock who's there, and then I print out my joke. Then I want to separate the joke by some lines. So I call separator 20. Now separator, notice this has something we can input into it, a 20. So I can put a 20 in here. I can actually put any number I want. Um, so here's how you define then a procedure or a function with an input. You put it inside the parentheses. So separator is defined up here, and it takes a number, and I've called that number n. You can put any variable you want there. And then it immediately defines x to be a string with just a minus sign times n. Now remember that in strings, if you multiply n, it's just going to repeat that string minus sign n times. And then it's going to print um that string x which is just a bunch of minus sides and then it adds to that at the end of backslash n so it puts a carriage return or puts a new line on the end of it so let's see what happens when we run this knock knock version four so we get knock knock intro knock knock who's there we get the print canoe canoe who can you help me with my homework that's all this stuff that goes down to a new line. Then separator is called. Separator comes in and says, I want 20 versions of a minus sign. So it prints out 20 versions of a minus sign. Adds to that, or concatenates is the word we use, to that string, a new line. Kicks us down to here. We call knock knock intro again. Knock knock who's there. And then we get any any who, anyone you like. So in this case, we've used the procedure knock knock intro twice. We didn't have to type out knock knock who's there all the time. So if we had a bunch of knock knock jokes and we can just keep calling knock knock intro, we can keep calling separator. Um, 
and have that functionality built in. We can actually make that line longer if we make this separator 30 and run this, then what happens? The separating line gets longer. We put in more minus signs. So the idea again with functions is to break up the work. Um, hopefully you, this becomes more readable with hard code. So you say knock knock intro and that gives you an idea of, oh, there's gonna be an introduction to the knock 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 joke. Then we print out this stuff um, and the homework that you're going to work on, you're going to change this to become a procedure that says, okay, what's the line, what's the punch line, and then you're going to write a little procedure to print that out. And so then you can just have knock, knock intro, knock, knock, or the answer or response or whatever. And this whole thing can just become a procedure that you can easily print out knock, knock jokes. So maybe not the most useful thing in the world, but I think uh, maybe a nice introduction to procedures. And in the future chapters, we're going to get into functions. Functions are things that you're going to come in here, maybe compute some stuff or do some things, and then send a value back to the original program. Um, an example we've actually seen of that is something like cosine, where this goes off, it computes a, a value and returns a value back, and we can assign it to another variable y. Okay, so now we're going to work in class on writing some of your own procedures.